Hi, Jason here, and in this video, we'll be looking at an alternative for ChatGPT and also comparing it up against ChatGPT, and it's called Open Assistant. So it's come out within the last week or so, and it's really like an open source version of ChatGPT. Uh, as it says there, um, your con conversational assistant, state-of-the-art assistant that can be personalized to your needs. It can retrieve stuff from the search engines as well. So that's pretty cool. A building block for developers. So you can also integrate Open Assistant into applications. So there's kind of the breakdown. You can go ahead and open a free account. All you have to do is just confirm your email and then you're in, you're straight in. And this is what the dashboard looks like. So it's quite neat and uh, well designed, simple at this point. But what they really want people to do is to get involved and actually make this project better by going ahead and kind of ranking up replies that it gives and doing all of these other different things, which then gives you points. Now, I don't really know what the benefit is of actually having those points, but it gives you points and you can see yourself on the leaderboard like we've got here, you know, that you get a score basically for how helpful you are, whether you label content good or bad, and then the replies that you provide as well. So that's it. Um, and then the actual system itself is right here. That was a previous chat. I'll just delete that because we're going to go through a few tests with this using the kind of prompts that I would use with ChatGPT, and we're going to see how well it does. And I think we need to cut it some slack because it's only just released and it's a good project in terms of the fact that it's open source so everyone can get involved and it's a, it's a kind of a free-for-all uh, ChatGPT. So let's try a few different things. Now, one of, one of the main benefits of this is it does say that it can retrieve information from the search engines. So one thing I wanted to test, I know the answer to this with a chat GPT is we'll just ask a simple question. When did the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II die? And of course, we know that ChatGPT is limited up to September 2021, right at the time of doing this video. And uh, of course, it doesn't know. So it just says there she's still alive, basically, which is would be great if she was. But sadly, she is not. And so now if we try that on open uh, assistant, then surely with its ability to connect to the Internet, we should get a different answer. So let's try right there. Oh dear. Uh, Queen Elizabeth II is still alive and has not yet died. Uh, she was crowned in 1953 at the age of 27, making her one of the longest serving monarchs ever to rule over the UK. That bit's true, but unfortunately, um, the other bit is not. So this is using this language model right here that you can see. Um, I don't believe at this time, let me just check on this. Yes, you do have the ability to go and change the language model, um, although it only provides this one at the moment, but I believe you can, they are adding other language models into this as well. And then you can, you can make all of these adjustments and things too. So I don't particularly know what all of these do and mean, but um, it, there is some degree of configuration with this. However, you know, with its ability to connect to the internet, I would have expected that to be a good answer. But unlike ChatGPT, it, it's not really given us one, has it? So let's try something else. Let's try a sort of more traditional thing that people are using ChatGPT for, which is to create content. So this time I'll put, write an outline for an article about social media marketing for small business owners. Uh, and let's just put, let's put, write an outline. Yeah, that's fine. Great. Let's just see what it does there. And here it goes. Sure. Here is a possible outline. Introduction to the benefits of using social media in small business. Uh, choosing the best platforms. Uh, Facebook versus Twitter versus LinkedIn. How much time and money should be spent on building a following, building your online presence, creating content that works and paid advertising options and when to use them. Um, not bad, uh, not not exceptional either. Now let's try that over in uh, chat GPT. We use 3.5 just for speed because uh, four might take a little while. And bosh, there we go. There, there is uh, there is chat GPT's version. And obviously it is clearly more 
um, comprehensive. So it's saying introduction, uh, explanation of the importance of social media, identifying your target audience, tips for identifying them, uh, how social media can help you understand your target audience, choosing the right platform, creating content strategy. This is way more comprehensive, as I'm sure you'll agree. So really, really good outline for that from ChatGPT 3.5. But as I say, it is early days for, you know, Open Assistant, and we need to cut it a little bit of slack on that. The other thing that I wanted to do was to see if using its ability to connect to the internet, if it could go ahead, I'll just create a new chat, go ahead to a YouTube video and summarize the content from it, basically. So let's try that. Summarize the content from the following video. And there's the link. And this is just a video, a short, one of my shorts that I did. Um, and then it says the YouTube link you provided is not working. So we'll let's just see if that's the truth. Let's click on it and then we'll we'll open it up and we'll click confirm and then we'll just see if that's true. There it is. So there, there's me with a short. It seems to be working just fine. So that's a little bit disappointing there as well. I'm not really sure why it would do that. Now, soon with chat GPT, when uh, I really hope it's soon that we actually get permission to use the browser plugin. I've actually applied ages ago and uh, I'm waiting and waiting for my chance to be able to do it. I've been on Plus. I've, I've done everything. You know, I filled out the application form about five times. I still haven't got the browser plugin. And that's when we'll be able to sort of go online and hopefully do things like I just showed you uh, when I'm trying to do it with Open Assistant. But um, so, yeah, that's kind of a fail, really, for me. Now, what about coding? How well can this Open Assistant do coding? So I'll ask it to just create a simple website for me using HTML that tells a joke. And let's see how it gets on for that. Oh, it says error aborted by worker. I'm just going to click retry because sometimes it does that and then you get a second chance to do it. And, and, and it's doing seemingly a good job. It's ticking along here. Here's an example of a simple website created with HTML that displays a joke. And I can see, I understand basic HTML, and this this does look absolutely fine. We've got our you know main HTML, the header, the body, and the body uh, ending tag. Uh, why did the tomato turn red? Because it saw the salad dressing as its joke. So that's pretty cool. And then let's just go and say, um, can you make it look nicer using some CSS, which is cascading style sheets. So it's going to apply some styling now. And, and I like the way it says to make the website look more presentable. Here's an updated version of the code with some basic CSS applied. So it's put a, a light blue for the background color, um, increased the font size of the H1 tag, and then uh, made the make text visible on a blue background color white. Now, that's interesting because I don't think white text on a light blue background is going to be the best idea at all. But it does at least make it bold. And, and then it's given you the, um, the code again just there for the main website. Though it doesn't look like it's linked. It doesn't look like it's linked to the CSS this here to the website. So that's interesting. But now let's just go and try ChatGPT and see how ChatGPT gets on. We know that ChatGPT is pretty awesome at coding usually. So here we go. Brrr, done. It's so fast now. You know, when you're using 3.5 at least. ChatGPT 4 for me uh, has been a little bit of a letdown in the way that it produces content. So often it stops in the middle of producing whatever content you've asked it to and you have to type in continue. And then sometimes that messes up what it was doing. Like if you were having a code, some code done, sometimes it puts it in the response rather than in this nice copy box like that. So yeah, not been overly, overly chuffed with that. But here's, here's an interesting thing. Here's an interesting thing. Have you spotted something about the code that chat GPT has produced? It's exactly the same in terms of the joke. Why did the tomato turn red? Because it saw the salad dressing. Now, that's a little bit odd to me, you know, uh, you would have to question what are the odds of it coming up with the exact same joke? Maybe it's trained on chat GPT data. I don't know. 
but it has done it. And so now let's follow up and just say, uh, can you also create some CSS code to make that website look nicer? And it should have no problems in doing that. So, okay, what it's done, in, instead of having a separate CSS styling sheet, it's just put it straight into the main website there as well, by the look of it. There we go. That's fine. You can do that. You don't have to have it separate. And that would work perfectly looking at that code. So um, good job from ChatGPT. No issues there at all with that. So going back to Open Assistant then, now let's try something else. Now, one of the interesting things about Open Assistant is if we just go to the dashboard uh, and then we just go to create a new chat. I'm sure it says here somewhere that there we go. So these are the different things that it uses to try and give accurate content. Uh, weights and biases. So it's got like some sort of plug in to weights and biases. Hug and face. Um, and inference is really what it means is, is it's the conclusion that it comes to is trying to get accuracy in that by using these different things here. Now let's try with that then. Um, let's try convert 100 kg into pounds. We'll try that. Here we go. Oh, and again, it's kind of aborted by worker, but we can just click retry. So it's no big deal. To convert a measurement from one unit to another, you need to know the conversion factor between them. The conversion factor for converting units of mass can vary depending on whether you're using the imperial metric, blah, 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 blah. Just give us the answer. To convert 100 kilograms to pounds, first divide by 2.205. This will give 46 pounds. Now, I don't think that's entirely right. In the United States and some other countries that use the imperial system, pounds are used as a unit of weight instead of kilograms. I don't know. I don't think that's right. So now let's go and speak with uh, ChatGPT and try it out. Convert 100 kilograms into pounds. And here we are. It is, in fact, uh, 220.46 pounds. So yes, I mean, obviously, you know, a kilogram is heavier than a pound. Therefore, that's the answer. So it hasn't done too great on that either, has it? It's done it the opposite way round. It's kind of, it should have times, um, it should have times 2.205 by 100 instead of dividing it by the looks of it. So yeah, not, not overly impressed. Now let's try another thing with Open Assistant. We'll see if it's any good at finding domain names. So I've got a fictitious website, say, for selling dog beds, and I want it to come up with 10 domain names um, for doing that. So now let's see if it can do that. Well, I don't suppose for a minute it's actually checking whether these are available, by the way, but you can use something like GoDaddy's bulk domain search to test this out. But there's some good names here. Canine Cushions is a classic. I love that. Uh, furryfloorspace.com, doggy dream bed, fuzzy resting place, the cozy kennel.com, bedtime for barks. I like that as well. That's really good. Hound home haven, snooze spots for sniffers. Uh, it's a little bit too much there, but that's, that's still pretty good effort. Pause perch. That's, that's quite good. Now let's go over to chat GPT and see what GPT 3.5 can do. Paste that one in. Gosh, so fast, isn't it? Uh, doggy dream beds. God, was that was that over there? Let me just go back over there. Doggy dream bed. You know, this is really interesting the way these two different platforms are coming up with some seriously similar things here. Canine cushions. And uh, what have we got over here? I'm sure we have. We've got caninecushions.com. It's just so similar, so interesting. This language model must surely be using something, the same information as ChatGBT was in order to train itself. Uh, otherwise, how could it just be so similar like that? Pour some sleeps, woof nest, petslumber.com. There's no chance that that's going to be available. Um, but maybe I'm I'm really interested to know actually is uh, is is actually that available. Go Daddy, let's just go Go Daddy. Good grief, can't spell. GoDaddy.com. Let's just go and see if that's available. That's really interesting. That's such a great name. Oh, Go Daddy, here we go. And Canine Cushions. I don't think so, not in a million years, because it's just too good. But if it is, I'm having it. 
Uh, there we go. Oh, canine cushions is taken, but you can you can use their very expensive broker service to see if they can beg it off the owner. All right. Nope. So that's not available. But so it's not checking availability with open uh, a system, which would be a big ask, to be honest with you. But now using something like auto GPT, I think you probably could get it to go and uh, actually find a, or suggest a ton of domain names and then go and test to see if they're available using something like GoDaddy's bulk domain checking service. So maybe I'll do another video on trying that out uh, when I test AutoGPT fully. But there you go. This has been like a good test of Open Assistant. It's early days, like I say, so I certainly wouldn't want to give these guys too much of a hard time. They're trying to do a good thing. They're creating an open source um, chat GBT for everybody. They're not charging for it at the moment. So it seems it seems like a, a good project and I wish them all, all the success. You can find the link underneath to give it a try. However, if you're a business owner at this point, you are not going to really want to be using this. You're definitely going to want to be, you know, using chat GPT, I would say, over that for creating things like articles and stuff. I mean, you can see the quality of the outline here that ChatGPT produced compared to Open Assistant. Um, by the way, if you're really into ChatGPT and you want to learn how to, you know, create amazing content with it and use it to the max uh, so that you're right up there with the latest AI tech, then I would definitely encourage you to jump over to ChatGPT users. It's my free uh, group where we have nearly now 4,000 members of AI fanatics, all talking about the latest uh, AI image producers and the, the latest things like Open Assistant and the ChatGPT, obviously Adobe Firefly. We're, we're all just mad about AI and you're invited to come and join for free and, and uh, have a chat and get involved. Everybody um, is really generous with what they share. You can have a look at uh, the latest prompts that people have submitted right here. So really, really good content in here for you and it's yours for free. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like and subscribe and uh, I'll be doing some more content very soon. And no doubt at the end of this video, you'll see uh, some recommendations of more videos to watch if you're into this sort of stuff. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in another one.